Okay, this is uh, part two, kind of, of the store tutorial that I'm making, my Ajax JavaScript store. Um, basically, what this video is going to be about is creating the quantity updating action. So, uh, if you look at the cart, I actually made this view card button. It opens the cart up, and what I want to have happen here is, when I change this number, I wanted to change the total price up here as I type this. So if I type in 55, it should reflect it. And then uh, later on, I'll do if I type in 0, it should go away completely. And I think, yeah, I actually already did that part. So I'm going to clear the cart, check it out, it should say no items, and then I'll go ahead and add an item to the cart. Okay? So now, now we have it set up so that we can actually go ahead and do that. First thing that I have to do is add the action. So I need to find uh, this box and add a, a key up event. Okay, so if we go to js underscore php here and we find that box, which is this uh, input box right here. Okay, it already has an on blur, which is when you click away. So that's already that, that check for delete. I'm not doing that now. I've already done that. So we need to add an on key up equals quote. And the function we're going to call is, uh, we're just going to call it update quantities, right? Update quantities. Now we're going to send it this. We're going to send it the input box because there's two pieces of information we need to get. We, n we don't just need the value. We don't, because we could do this dot value if we wanted just the new quantity. But we need to know which item we're updating. And the only way to tell which item we're updating is to take that this input box, its parent is this TD, and its parent is this TR. Now, in this table row, we actually store the ID, the unique ID of each item. Uh, I didn't show you in the last video, but when you add an item, I'll actually show you that down here. When you add an item, it actually sets the ID to whatever time it was when you added that item plus JSS underscore. So every item has its own unique ID, and it actually adds that to the table row. So every row refers to an item and has a unique ID. And using that, being stored in the array of session cart items, okay, I don't know if I'm losing you here, I'll actually be able to get that, and I'll show you that actually as I do it. But the point is, is that I need to pass the input box so that I can use jQuery to traverse to get to this TR, okay? So update quantities, this, okay, save that. Now we need to write the JavaScript function for update quantities. Function update quantities, and that's going to pass in QTY quantity box. Okay, that's the quantity box that we passed in. Now again, this is a DOM object. So we need to get the uh, we need to get the quantity. So I'm going to keep this well commented. So get the new quantity. Okay. So var new quantity equals that would be qty underscore box dot value. Okay. That's how you get the quantity. Now we need to get the unique ID. So var ID equals. Now we're going to wrap the DOM element in jQuery so that we can use jQuery on the DOM element like that. Now we're going to do dot parent. Now that's the TD dot parent. Now that's the TR, and now we want the attribute ID, okay? That is our ID of the unique box. So we're going to say unique ID of this product, okay? So now we've gotten the ID. Now what we need to do is use Ajax to send that information to PHP. So dollar sign post, uh, the, f the JavaScript file is js slash js underscore store, the folder slash js underscore Ajax. Dot PHP, and then we need to send it. Now, I'll show you this in a second. The way I'm doing this, I'm putting all my Ajax in one file, and I'm passing in a task variable. So if I go over to the PHP file real quick, you'll see um, I have this switch statement. So basically, I'm switching task. So I have clear cart, add item, uh, return cart, delete item, and I'm going to have soon update quantity. Basically, all the Ajax happens right there. So I have to set, first set the task and that's going to be equal to update underscore QTY. Now I need to pass in the new quantity. I'm going to call it new QTY and that is equal to new QTY. Okay, made it very simple. And then I need to pass the ID, ID colon ID as well. Close that. That's the string of variables that I need to pass and that's going to bring back when it's done a function passing back some data. Now what it's going to pass back is the, uh, hopefully it will pass back the total price. So the idea of updating the quantity is that it updates that total price. So we're, we need to get the ID 
than of the total price. So back in the PHP file here, we look it up, um, total price is right here. So that needs to be the cart total price. That's the, the element that holds that total price. So that's going to be in jQuery, that gets that element. The HTML is going to be equal to data, which is that variable that we're going to get back. Okay, so there's the JavaScript part done. Save that. Now that we have all that, we need to create this update quantity in PHP. Now again, we're going to get task, we're getting new QTY, and we're getting ID. So if we go here, and we go into our switch statement, update quantity, colon, and end it with a break. Okay, now, basically, let me scroll up here. Update QTY. So what do we want to have happen here? Well, first we need to get that ID, and that's going to be equal to the post variable ID. So that's the ID, the unique ID. Then we need to get the quantity, and that's going to be new QTY equals uh, post now QTY. That's how you get it. Now, however, uh, since this is user input data, I want to make sure 100% that it's an integer. So I'm going to call int val on it just to make sure they didn't put any letters or numbers or anything that could hurt my database. Okay, now we need to use a for each statement. So we have our session. So we have our session, oops, session cart. Okay, that's our array of items, and each item is also an array. That's a triple array. Okay, so we need to loop through the array of cart. So we have basically like cart zero and we have cart 1 and cart 2. So we need to loop through these. So instead of trying to find the length, which I know you can do easily, we're going to do for each. That way it's always perfect. For each, and now we're going to do for each of the items in, in this session. Okay, We're going to say that's as a key to their value. Okay, And we're going to call that item. So item, the variable item, it refers to each item so so session cart 0 is an item but 0 is the key okay that way we get both of them okay so just for example this this first row um, I'm gonna just write you some some statements that make sense here session cart 0 just so you can see equals item that's what this first thing is and the second one or and then at the same time key equals 0 okay this is what gets a value this is what this first iteration is and then after the first iteration you get this where key equals one okay see how that kinda works so what I need to do with this is I need to test if the if the item ID okay if the item ID is equal to the ID that I passed in so I'm looping through all of the items in the cart to see if one of the items IDs matches the one I just passed in. If it does, and it will, then I have found the item that I want to update. So to update the quantity, we underscore session. We have to store it into the session, or it's not going to store in the session. Cart is the name of our, our array. Now, which one to update is actually key, okay? Key. And then we now so the so this is a little complicated now. So this is uh this is the array of items, and then this is which item, and then this is which property we're updating is QTY. So it's a triple array, and that equals the new QTY. Now at first when I did this, I did um, since session cart equals item, I had done item QTY, right? equals I had done this however the problem with this is that it doesn't restore the session which means it doesn't store the data so you can't do that okay you actually need to set the session and that will reset the, the quantity now we need to after the for loop we need to echo uh, the total so I actually have already created a function two functions actually uh, calculate total basically says if the cart is there loop through the whole cart like we did a second ago and add up the total. It's the price times the quantity for each one and echo the total. And then I made a function called money that just returns a dollar sign plus the number format in two. Basically it formats into US dollars. So I just need to pass um, money and then uh, calculate total parenthesis parenthesis and that will print out there is no QTY it's actually um, I posted a new 
yeah, new QTY is what I posted. So if I actually look back at the JavaScript, yeah, new QTY. So if I now look at it, view cart, change 0 to 1, there you go, 1, $50, $2, $100, 3, $150, 30, $1,500, 300, 15,000. So now it's updating that price. And if I go away because it's session and come back, it stores that 300 and it's still there.